What up guys, it's me Jules aka RetroJ back on the gaming channel, his home, his kingdom once more with a brand new review just for you. Now today I'm going to be talking about Marvel vs Capcom Infinite. Now it's been six years since Marvel vs Capcom 3 came out and that's a lot of time. And in that time, you expect a lot of changes. So does Infinity have the stones? Or is it just weak in the knees? Let's find out. So before I have a grumble, let's talk about the good stuff, the positivity, because in these trying times, we need to keep hold of that. You need to keep your chin up and soldier on, no matter how much you might miss them. For a start, the game looks pretty good. Not outstanding, but it's a noticeable improvement from the goblin face scenario that we had going on in the demo. It's still not as nice as Marvel vs Capcom 3, but the levels do contain a nice sense of energy and warmth, and the character models for the most part are pretty good. The voice acting is predictably gruff and over the top silliness that you'd expect from superheroes, but it's done really well. And shout out to the guy who's playing Iron Man with his Robert Downey Juniorisms going over very well. Two thumbs up. One of the biggest new selling points of this game is that there's a robust single player experience where you take two parties, one from Marvel and one from Capcom, I know right, could you have guessed it, as you try to battle Ultron Sigma, who is seeking dominion over both worlds and tying them together with his tacky, awful spiky wristbands. To be fair though, he's actually a really good villain and there's a lot of twists and turns across the story which make it a very fun experience. It's not Injustice or Mortal Kombat 10 levels of production value but I am very pleased to see it included here because if you remember the other games they had kind of a lacklustre story if anything going on. Also there are a ton of nods to comic and movie lore meaning that it's quite a rich and rewarding experience for fans. However, that can all go hang like the neighbor's dog if the fighting system in place isn't beautiful. So, I'm going to calm all your fears by saying yes. This is still tight, frantic, chaotic, and in the right hands can be a very controlled beatdown experience. But, and this is a big but, there are some noticeable changes and some strange omissions that make Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite feel very different from its predecessors. For example, battles are now two on two rather than three versus three, which is a strange move considering that while the fights do feel fast and frantic now because it's obviously much smaller, the emphasis is that it feels much smaller and therefore less intense. It's a very strange choice and I can't really see why they've done this. However, once you look at the character roster, which is only 30 compared to 48 in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it might have been done to hide the fact that this smaller roster just doesn't have everything that you want from there. And this roster lacks all X-Men and some interesting characters like Phoenix Wright. I mean, he was never going to be a game changer, but it's sad to see people that were in the last game be completely removed from this one. And it's not just a personal preference thing, the lack of character choice does affect what you can do in battle. With entire teams gone and the developers saying that, oh, it's because we put this feature from one character and this one together to make this new character. It's like, yeah, but I'm not getting what I had before. I was really good with, say, Magneto or Storm, and now they're completely gone, and I've got no one really to replace them with. Also a weird choice, you can't really do a direct assist anymore. In the old games, you'd tap a button, then somebody would come in, do a move, and then jump back out again, allowing you to control the battle even if you were floating about in the air, which a lot of my friends like to do. Now, in this game, you tap the button and you instantly switch. Now, you can use it to chain together attacks, but it does mean that once you press that button, you better be ready to commit to switching characters. And that threw me for a bit being a fan of the old series. I was just like, oh, I didn't want to bring in a person on such low health. Well, I guess I'm stuck with them now. And finally, X Factor has been dropped. In the old games, you could use this to basically get a boost on your health and damage output and it could usually swing the tide of battle. This has been switched out for the Infinity Stones, which do add a nice bit of variance, but they don't really feel as implemented as X Factor did. They actually feel, maybe, if anything, a little tacked on, because, I mean, they do specific moves, but they are the exact same moves. In MLG tournaments, X Factor would be the sort of thing that everyone was waiting for the person to use. The Infinity Stones, I don't see having that same hold of interest. I tell you, these missing features are as apparently noticeable as a few certain personalities leaving a certain wrestling channel who did so amicably, and I wish them all the best. All of these changes make the game feel anemic compared to the previous entries. It's still really fun to play, 
but it just feels that there is a lackluster spirit in this. I expected so much more from six years of development time. And it just reeks of a game that's been streamlined so much so that it can be ready for people to just pick up and play and introduce them to the series that it's kind of alienated the hardcore fan base that got them this notoriety in the first place. I had extremely high expectations of this game. And while I'm still having fun in the online lobbies and trying to figure out new ways to chain moves together, it's just an experience that didn't deliver on what I wanted it to. However, I would still recommend this game to newcomers to the series as it's a perfect entry point and again, the single player experience is worth playing alone. And there will always be a soft spot in my head for this when I've got friends over and I want to show them who's the daddy. With this in mind, I'm giving Marvel vs Capcom Infinite a 3 out of 5. That's above average and still worth a try, but just fell short of being the great game I wanted it to be. And that's my review. Let me know if you're picking up this game and if you've already got it, what you thought about it in the comments section below. As always, like, share and subscribe for more content like this. And I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.